strange but true stories, tales from the light side, the dark side, and the other side. I'm Steve White. Hey there, SBT fans. I have to admit to you, I'm not sure which side, light, dark, or other, today's story comes down on. But a couple of things that I need to share with you before we get started. First, I've gotten caught up in Outlander. Now, for those unfamiliar with this science fiction period, or should I say periods drama, it's about a woman in 1945 who gets sent back 200 years through a set of stones in the Scottish Highlands. It's got your romance and dudes in kilts fighting the English and castles, but it's also got the time travel element involved. And then, earlier this week, I read a Wired article that reported on a group of researchers who figured out a way to spy on unsuspecting people by observing the minuscule vibrations created by voices on the glass surface of a light bulb. So, both of those things figure into today's episode, time travel and latent historical vibrations. In 2002, a man by the name of Father Francois Brun, a French Catholic priest and writer, published a book titled The New Vatican Mystery. In it, Brun wrote about a man, Father Pellegrino Ernetti, and a device called the chronovisor that allowed the user to look and hear into the distant past, and it was housed in the Vatican. Many years earlier, Brune had met with Father Ernetti, an Italian Benedictine monk, musicologist, and scientist. Ernetti was a well-respected authority on archaic music and a sought-after mentor for many clerics in Europe. Ernetti had read and studied some of Brune's earlier writings and invited him to Italy for a visit. On one particular day, the two spent the day sailing along the Grand Canal of Venice, discussing biblical interpretations. Ernetti stopped Brune in mid-thought about one interpretation, explaining that such theories and interpretations were not necessary when one could see the truth for oneself. He told Brune about the chronovisor and how it functioned, allowing the viewer to both see and hear events of the past. He said that the machine worked by detecting images and sounds that humanity had created which were floating in space. His full account is included in Brune's 2002 book. An article published in 1972 by an Italian magazine told of a machine that photographs the past and stated that the chronovisor time machine was heralded as one of the papacy's best-kept secrets. Those that have claimed to see it and use it tell of this device looking like a cabinet made with metal alloys, it has dials, levers, and a cathode ray tube to watch the event in question. It is said that it has the ability to display many historic events in biblical and Roman history. Similar to television, the chronovisor has even supposedly verified the existence of Jesus Christ and displayed his crucifixion. The chronovisor was supposedly invented in the 1950s by a team of Italian scientists that included physicist Enrico Fermi and Ernetti. Fermi was awarded the Nobel Prize for Physics in 1938 for his demonstrations of the existence of new radioactive elements produced by neutron irradiation and for his related discovery of nuclear reactions brought about by slow neutrons. In essence, he nearly created the atom bomb. In fact, he's known as the godfather of the atom bomb. Also part of the project is said to be Werner von Braun. Von Braun was an infamous Nazi who was brought to the United States after World War II to help NASA with the space program. Without von Braun, the U.S. would probably not have made it to the moon in advance of the Russians. Neither Fermi nor von Braun ever spoke of the chronovisor, but... Then again, their names weren't associated with the project until the 1990s, many years after both men had died. In his telling to Brune, Father Ernetti said he and the rest of the team spliced together the insights of modern physics to the ancient occult knowledge of the astral planes to build the chronovisor. 
Ernetti asserted that, using the chronovisor as his eyes and ears, he had watched Christ dying on the cross and attended a performance of a now lost Greek tragedy, Thyestes, by the father of Latin poetry, Quintus Ennius, in Rome, in a production in the year 169 BC. Ernetti also claimed to have witnessed the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and the founding of Rome in 753 BC, all from the comfort of the Vatican, watching through the chronovisor. Ernetti said the device was dismantled, and the project was canceled by the Vatican, but not destroyed. Since it could tune anywhere and any time in the past, if it were to fall into the wrong hands, many feared it could create the scariest dictatorship the world has ever seen. Unfortunately, Arnetti never provided a detailed explanation as to how his time travel device was fashioned, or how it worked, except to mysteriously claim that it ran by, quote, processing residual electromagnetic radiation left over by numerous processes, end quote. In 1994, Father Ernetti said that Pope Pius XII forbade any disclosure or details about this device because the machine was very dangerous. It can restrain the freedom of man, he said. In 1988, the Vatican issued a decree warning anyone using an instrument of such characteristics would be excommunicated. Now, some wonder, why issue a warning if a device like that doesn't exist? So, where's the evidence? Well, the evidence of the chronovisor is flimsy at best. Outside of the story told by Ernetti and written down by Brune, there are a few dubious photographs floating around on the internet, including what is claimed to be a chronovisor photo of Jesus on the cross. And claiming that he had seen and heard Thyestes, Ernetti transcribed its scenes for the public. Doubt was cast upon his version from a Princeton University professor and an expert on Thyestes, saying the version Ernetti produced is not only too short, but it also contained Latin words that wouldn't have been used until 200 or more years after any use's time. Eh, eh, maybe he paraphrased. Ernetti's account also strikes a resemblance to a time-viewing device in T.L. Sherrod's science fiction novella E for Effort, published in 1947, just before the supposed invention of the Vatican's device. Ernetti was fairly quiet about the chronovisor in the decade prior to his death, but shortly before he died in April 1994, he wrote a letter in which he insisted that the device was real and was not a hoax. Though Brune never saw the device, he insisted he believed Ernetti was telling the truth because he believed he had no reason to lie. This has been another strange but true story through the pages of history. So what do you think? Is the Vatican storing one of the greatest pieces of technology ever developed by man hidden away from the world in one of its many chambers? Or is it just a science fiction novel ripoff? Let us know in the comments below. Subscribe if you haven't already and sign up for notifications so you know when the next SBT video drops on YouTube. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Steve White. Until next time.